Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tentacom video, we're going to be discussing all things AMD. We're going to be starting things out with Vega, we're going to touch on Zen, and we're also going to discuss various other assets of AMD's business, including some of the information regarding with their partnerships with Microsoft and Sony. That's specifically financial information, so it may not be as interesting, but the Zen and Vega is definitely interesting because we're talking about release date and performance, that type of jazz. So, just to get everyone onto the same page, this is a document which AMD released quarterly, um, just like most companies, and the idea behind it is to say, hey, this is what we're doing, this is what we're creating, this is our profits, and so on. It's basically investment relations, it's to build confidence in the company for investors, right? But it also serves rather well for enthusiasts or people who are just curious about the um, state of affairs in the tech industry. Vega, of course, is the ultra high-end part that we're waiting for for AMD, from AMD rather, and of course it will be competing with the GTX 1080, the 1070, and possibly the Titans, depending on the card's performance. We're expecting it to be essentially a GCN 4.0 part, which is the very similar parts which are used in Polaris, but obviously on steroids, so you've got a whole bunch more compute units, and it's going to be paired with high bandwidth memory too. We don't know about clock speeds, but they could potentially be higher. Once again, we're unsure about that. But there has been a lot of talk regarding the release date of Vega. Now, Chris Hook on Facebook, his personal Facebook, mind you, said that he was showing off the Vega launch venue with just an image of some rundown factory and other rumours had also pegged the card at some point late this year but that's not to be unfortunately if you're looking for a high-end card this year my advice to you is just to buy it now at GTX 1070 or 1080 or possibly if you've already got like a high-end 980 tie then possibly buy a second one for like you know um, SLI goodness but AMD in these slides have confirmed that Vega is going to be launching for the enthusiast market in the first half of 2017, which I agree isn't ideal, but ultimately it is what it is. So in another slide, we can see that we're going to see the introduction of next generation graphics and processor products. Now that's really weird because that's probably Navi, which means that by 2018 we're going to see Navi hitting the shelves. So there are some questions because I just mentioned that Polaris is supposedly going to be very similar to Vega, but there are some questions on that. Are there going to be any tweaks in the architecture? So you could almost think of it as like GCM 4.5, for example. Well, unfortunately, we just don't know. And whether Vega, let's say if you were to somehow rip out one Vega core, use exactly the same memory at the same clock speed, and do exactly the same with a Polaris part, whether the two compute units would essentially perform identically. What we can be sure of regarding Navi, and I say sure as in the loosest possible sense, is based upon other slides where they said they are going to be using next generation memory and it's going to be a scalable architecture. Next generation memory, and um, this is based upon another video I just did a couple of days ago, we're looking at HBM3 and GDDR6, which is not to be confused by R5X, just, God, there are so many different acronyms, but yes, so R5X is going to be stopping um, at a certain uh, speed, and then we're going to see R6 continuing, basically, and that is going to start seeing uh, introduced over the next couple of years as well, which makes an awful lot of sense, because that's going to coincide with Navi. Alright, so that was as clear as mud. What we also have found out based upon this document is Zen. So Zen, to get everyone onto the same page, is of course the next generation CPU from AMD. And what we are completely aware of when it comes to Zen is that AMD have already shown off a couple of benchmarks which of course put it at slightly faster, and I do mean slightly by a couple of seconds faster than a 6900K from Intel, that's an i7, which has eight eight cores, uh, 16 threads available, which is exactly the same number as Zen, and that's assuming the clock speeds are identical. So, AMD are going to be re-entering the x86 server market, which is worth about $18 plus billion, apparently, good to know. 
and the high performance Zen cores are going to be available in first half of 2017 for servers, which is pretty damn, pretty damn uh, important for servers. But AMD have reiterated that it's going to be the first quarter for desktop, specifically Summit Ridge. So Summit Ridge is going to be based on AM4, and as I said. We're looking at eight cores, 16 threads for the high end, and obviously going to be utilizing DDR4 memory. It's looking pretty damn shiny, folks. And desktop, for the, uh, sorry, desktop, notebook, uh, is gonna hit in the second half of 2017. Your guess is as good as mine what the difference is um, in terms of performance or whether they're gonna be pretty identical. We also have some information concerning AMD's profits with Scorpio and also their design wins. So incremental design wins secured amounted to over 1.5 billion over the next three to four years and they've listed Microsoft Project Scorpio. My guess however is that we're not just looking at Scorpio for those design wins and it could also be the Xbox Slim, it could also be the PlayStation 4 Neo and it could potentially be the PS4 Slim. Unfortunately obviously they can't release things which are NDA to other companies, so they can do it for their own company because, well, it's theirs, but they can't do so for other companies, so there are probably things that are going on that they can't reveal. One interesting caveat is there are x86 and ARM opportunities. I would love to know what those mean, and they are for semi-custom models. So semi-custom is basically they are taking existing technology and they're tweaking it for other customers. For example, in this instance, we can be looking at the likes of the Xbox One, the PS4, who obviously have taken what AMD have already built, for example, the Jaguar cores or the early GCN cores, tweak them around a little bit. Uh, for example, Xbox One is using Bonaire, and then they've basically amalgamated them into one chip. So all they've done is they've customized it. So um, there are just a couple of other very small things for us to discuss in this document. The final thing that I really want to discuss is their focus over the next couple of years. Now I know that to a lot of people this is not as interesting as let's say the improvements of Zen, but it does give us an indication of where one of the largest players in the computing industry, let's face it, for if you're buying a desktop PC or you're buying parts for desktop PC, you've really got the choice between Intel or, well, AMD, and if you're buying a graphics card, Unless you're going to be doing, let's say, oh, I don't know, high-end CAD work. Really, if you're gaming, you've got, well, two choices, NVIDIA and AMD. So they are pretty much one of the major players. And it just shows, them, shows us, rather, what they want to do. So one is visual computing. So that's gaming and virtual reality. That's going to be about as surprising to you as saying, well, if I, you know, drop a rock on my foot, it's probably going to hurt a little. And the second is computing. So that's APUs and CPUs for dedicated PCs. Rather interestingly, when it comes to PCs, AMD have been really, really aggressive in interviews. Um, there was a financial interview, actually, with one of the stock market programs. I can't remember who it was, to be honest, as I've watched so many bloody interviews and stuff over the last couple of weeks. But Lisa Su in the interview was very, very quick to point out when the interviewer was like, why are you focusing on PCs and like servers when that market is shrinking? And as she said, no, it's not really. If you look at the market as a whole, it is, because let's face it, if you're doing word processing, you can do that on a smartphone now if you got the right accessories for it. But gaming on desktop is starting to grow a lot. Consoles, surprisingly, are still pretty popular, <laughs> to say the least. And then you've got server markets and high-performance computing. So those require an awful lot of computational power. You can't get away with a high-performance you know, PC for gaming that's like seven years old. It just doesn't work. And similarly, if you're looking for high-end servers, those things are regularly and routinely upgraded, particularly if they're doing compute oriented work as well. So they want to re-enter the server market, and finally they want to broaden the technology uh, reach, which means they're going to be even more aggressive, from what I can tell, for semi-custom design wins, which is going to be really interesting. And they also want to deepen customer relations and also start to leverage their IP and the innovation, which shows the consoles. Now, I'm not 
sure about this because I can only I can only speculate. However, Microsoft and Sony have both hinted that we're going to see iterative consoles in the future. That could be really bloody good for AMD, and it makes me wonder whether they're going to have a long-standing relationship. Because let's face it, if they do, it would make an awful lot of sense because it means that you won't have to worry about different architectures for example let's say little things like asynchronous compute engines work very similarly across different iterations of GCN it means that yes you're going to have IPC improvements but the instruction uh, instruction stuff across all the processes is going to be the same and moreover they have certain business partnerships they've probably negotiated good rates I imagine for Microsoft and Sony and that means they don't have to do a whole bunch of other stuff plus because AMD ultimately can produce the best APUs available at the moment and yes there are some arguments that you know there are certainly other APUs available but for the consoles right this second from Microsoft and Sony's point of view AMD produced the best potential candidate because it had a decent x86 core with an awful lot of GPU performance and it could squeeze it together onto one piece of silicon which is pretty perfect so anyway um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Not, you know, a super technical one, but very, very interesting, at least in my opinion. But then again, I've got, you know, random and weird interests. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.